Hi, welcome to Tamiwa Oluen Podcast. Thanks for downloading, and as you listen, you are guaranteed an encounter with the word. I'll be sharing with us the topic, the valley of dry bones. The valley of dry bones. Speaking to the valley of dry bones. Speaking to the valley. Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 1 to 3. Ezekiel 37 verse 1 to 3. The Bible says the hand of the Lord was on me. Now the hand of the Lord here speaks of the power of God. Anywhere we see the hand of the Lord in the scriptures, it speaks of the power of God. His supremacy. The Bible says, and he brought me out by the spirit of the Lord. of a valley it was full of bones the Bible says he led me back and forth among them and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley bones that were dry bones that were shattered the Bible says he asked me son of man can these bones live Now Ezekiel was a prophet and also a priest. But he was captured by the Babylonians and the people of Israel. And they were taken into captivity. You would ask me, why were they taken into captivity? The Israelites are very stubborn. They are stubborn. Why are they stubborn? God will bless them and they will use the blessings against God. So many at times God will bless us and we use that blessing even against the God that gave us the blessing. You begin to serve the blessing than the blesser. Hallelujah. God exiled the people of Israel like due to their continuous rebellion against him. Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 13. The Bible says, But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They did not walk in my statutes. And they rejected my ordinances. Be careful. Sometimes when the Lord blesses you, you are too engrossed with the blessings and you forsake your God. The Bible says, And they rejected my ordinances. There are some weight of glory that are too much. You can't even carry it. And you keep still keep on requesting for glory. Father, I need your glory. But then God is telling you, oh my child, I need you to build up your capacity first. Because a glory without capacity will drain you. It's God's desire to bless his own. Many a times we are lost in that blessings just like the Israelites. You need the capacity to retain some blessings. In the story of the widow woman in 2 Kings chapter 4, the Bible says, as soon as our capacity of jars were used up, the oil ceased to flow. 2 Kings 4, 6, the Bible says, when the vessels were all full, she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not one left. Then the oil stop multiplying. When you don't have capacity, the blessings will stop multiplying. When you don't have enough capacity, that blessing will stop multiplying. Somebody say you need capacity. Somebody say you need to build capacity before the blessings. That's why most time God builds men before he raises men. God what he built men before he raises men. Even Job, yes, he was what? He was tested. He was being built. Hallelujah. If you are not ready to be built, then you 
can't be ready to be raised. If you are not ready to be built up, then you can't be ready to be raised. Because, you know, there is a way we chase blessings and we become captive. There is a way we chase blessings and we become dry bones, just like the Israelites. The Israelites were engrossed with the blessings of God that they forgot God. Tell your neighbor, may I not receive the blessing that I will forget God. May I not receive the blessings that I will forget God. Now moving on. The Bible says while Ezekiel was in captivity, God began to use him at his low moment. God began to use Ezekiel at his low moment. Who is saying God cannot use you at your own low moment? In fact, it is your, your low moment that you will hear away. Hallelujah. Because there is no distraction. In your low moment, the devil thinks you are useless. In your low moment, the devil thinks nothing can amount to you. Hey, but I'm here to tell somebody this morning that God uses that your low moment to do great and wonderful things. You know why? Because God is not a man that he should act the way man acts. No, is he a man that he should think the way man thinks. When man thinks is the end of your life, God is just starting. When man thinks is the end of your life, God is just starting. And that is why our God is a God of misery and is exceptional. It doesn't matter how the devil thinks he has won. God uses his own. God uses what? God uses his own. Hallelujah. Your low moment is never the end. It's just a bend. And as far as I'm concerned, what is bent can be sharpened. Hey, do you hear that? What is bent can be straightened. Hallelujah. He can do the impossible. He revives. He brings things back to life. And I prayed over somebody to this morning that the Lord will bring your dry bones back to life. In the name of Jesus. And the Bible says, Ezekiel read 30 years and God began to reveal to him in a moment of discouragement. When I say moment of discouragement, you say God reveals. In a moment of discouragement, in a moment of trials, don't turn a deaf ear to what God is saying at your low moment. Because it's what, it's what will save you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God took Ezekiel through a vision to the valley of bones. Hallelujah. He took Ezekiel to a vision to the valley of bones. The valley of bones here means the, the what? The Israelite. Hallelujah. Their bones were not together. There is tendons here, there is ligament there. And the Bible says, he took Ezekiel to the valley of dry bones. Now he took him to a vision of process. And the process is a step to progress. Hey. You know, despite what the Israelites did, God still loved them. You can be so privileged that you receive the grace like the Israelites. And you can still be so privileged that you won't receive such grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 9 to 11. The Bible says, For behold, I am for you, and I will turn unto you, and you shall till and sow. Now this revelation was revealed to Ezekiel. And I will multiply men upon you. This was when God was still showing the vision to Ezekiel. Before it happened in chapter 37. This is chapter 36. 
you know, when God begins to tell you prophecy, when God begins to tell you about your future, but it's just so good to be true because of the state you are in presently. Hallelujah. It's just too good to be true. Because you are in a state of discouragement and, the, and God sends somebody to you that your t- tomorrow will be great. Tomorrow will be beautiful. You will be rich. You will be this and that. And then you are looking at your situation. You are looking at what they are saying. And you are saying it's not contradicting. It's contradicting rather. Hallelujah. And you are saying it's contradicting. And that's, that's what happened to Ezekiel. He was seeing the Israelite filled with dry bones and God was showing him all this and he was like how is this correlating hallelujah and the Bible says I will multiply men upon you all the house of Israel even all of it and the city shall be inhabited and the way shall be built and I will multiply upon you man and beast and they shall increase and bring fruit and I will settle you after your own state and we do better unto you than at your beginnings and ye shall know that I am the Lord the prophecy coming out from your mouth doesn't have to make sense in fact there are some processes that you can't even comprehend and that's the way prophecy should work there are some things like you can't comprehend it. Hallelujah. Hosea chapter 12 verse 13. The Bible says, And by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet he was preserved. Now it is your own duty, it is the price of a believer to believe whatever the prophet says. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now some prophets may look like it but they don't carry it (laughs) hallelujah some prophets may look like it but they don't carry it but there are some that carries it and they are what shouldn't be taken for granted imagine Ezekiel took God's word for granted over the over the people of Israel would they have been out of Babylonia Hallelujah. Enoch was a prophet, yet did a little revelation. Hallelujah. Enoch was a prophet, yet he did a little revelation. John the Baptist was the greatest prophet of all, yet a little revelation. Somebody says to your neighbor, say, be careful. Now there can be imbalances and false prophets. some are communicating does not mean they are from God hallelujah and that's why we have the word of God that's why every true manifestations of prophecy must be within the boundaries of the word of God if somebody is prophesying to you and is not within the boundary of the word of God please flee Sometimes when God calls us, it means to follow him, not to start a ministry. (laughs) It means to follow him because it's only when you are made, when you are made rather, that you can be sent. It is only when God makes you that you can be sent. Your calling is not to the pulpit but to Jesus. No God first before you go and stand before Pharaoh. Some people have lost their lives because of this. Now you don't even have a praying time. You have to pack your family to your village. Greater is he that lives in me than he that lives in the world. Hallelujah. I will prophesy. Prophesy. Prophecy without no backing. There 
was a time I heard of a woman. She took the kids for, to village for, I think for a celebration, maybe Christmas or something. But when they came back, one of her children died. And I could sense it. There are some places you shouldn't go now. <laughs> Hallelujah. There are some places you what? You should not go now. Because you have not been fortified for some places. says these people come near me with their mouth and honor me with their lips but their hearts are far from me I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus I will not die but live it's so sweet to say the Bible says their worship of me is based on merely human rules that they have been taught You have not found God for yourself. All you keep hearing is what the pastor say. For how long? For how long? Hallelujah. I believe we can position ourselves with the prophet Ezekiel this morning. And we can also stand and say, God, says something in the chapter 36 of my life. And I am in my chapter 37. And the chapter 6, 36 of my life will happen. Hallelujah. Because there's something about the chapter 36. It's called prophecy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ezekiel said, The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me into the spirit of the Lord. Now this vision symbolized the whole house of Israel that was in captivity, like on buried skeletons. The people were in the haste of living death. So many of us, we are living coughs. Just like the Israelite. Hallelujah. And we need to find our bones this morning. Somebody say, I need to find my bones. Somebody say, I need to find my bones. Dry bones is a gathering of defeated people. The Israelites were defeated people. Each one of them is a symbol of defeat. That's, that, that's not where God promised them. God didn't create you to suffer. But your act is what is caging you. Just like the Israelite. You see, it's amazing how problem have the capacity to gather in numbers. In large numbers. Hallelujah. It's not encouraging when everyone around you is likely to be you. Now you are broke. Your brother is broke. Your friend is broke. Your best friend is broke. <laughs> it's a garden of dry bones. Hallelujah. It's a garden of what? Of dry bones. Yes, it could be a nice gathering. A gathering filled with emotions. And that's what is wrong with a lot of us. We are filled with emotions. Emotions. We are so filled with emotions that we even pity some people we are not supposed to pity. It's a gathering of dry bones. Now the Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 11, the Bible says, Then he said to me, son of man, these bones represent the people of Israel. They are saying, we have become old, dry bones, all hope is gone. Our nation is finished. In the gathering of dry bones, you become a companion of complainers. In the gathering of dry bones, 
all you do is complain. You know, the vision showed that Israel's new life depends on God's power and not the circumstances of the people. And Ezekiel did not generate the prophecy. God did. And you know one thing Ezekiel asked God? God asked Ezekiel, can these bones live? And God said, Ezekiel 37 verse 3, he asked me, son of man, can these bones live? I said, oh sovereign Lord, you alone know. In essence, only God can bring that thing back to life. You are filled with dry bones and you are running away from church. You are not saved. Is it the word that will save you? God told Ezekiel, prophesy over these bones. Prophesy over these dry bones. Sometimes all you just need is a prophecy. And God has given us the power. The Bible says the word of God is active and alive. Sharper than any two-edged sword. That sword is greater than God's last. It's greater than an incantation. Hallelujah. God told Ezekiel, prophesy over these dry bones. And that's what we'll be doing this morning. Commanding them to attack to one another. And they did so. Muscles cover the bones, but they still have no life in them. Somebody said, Don't give up, even when you keep praying to the bones and they have connected together, but still there's no life in them. Somebody said, Don't give up. The Bible says, Then God asked Ezekiel, Command breath into the old dead bodies and spring to life, standing on their feet, enough people for an entire army. It's one thing God commanding <laughs> and there's no prophecy. Hallelujah. Imagine God is commanding and there's no one around you that can prophesy. Imagine God commanding and Ezekiel prophesies and nobody is responding. If you are down and you have people around you and they are down you people are a group of dry bones but there is only one person that stood up and says I know what God has in stock for me you have to connect with that person hallelujah hallelujah don't just sit among complainers to the person that have a kindred spirit like you. Some people have company of friends that they are not doing any good to each other than to go out to parties. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If someone has heard what you heard, you people should work together. Sometimes the connection you need might be far from you. Some people will say, I want to go to a nearby church. Hey! You don't go to church for convenience. Though. You go to church for connectivity. You need to connect. Hallelujah! If it takes traveling a hundred miles, you have to take that hundred miles. Go that hundred miles. Imagine being in a church and you're not connected. <laughs> you know why you need to be connected? Because you must find your bone. Because you must find the people whereby your spirits align with each other. 
Many of us are living a life of convenience. What is easy to us. What is close to us. What we can do without stress. You don't know that sometimes if you really want to break through in life, you have to do the hard thing. Even the rich people do the hard thing. Hallelujah. Connect to something that is far. If the bones you must connect to is on the other side of the valley, I beg you in the name of God, please go. Please go. Your best friend may not be the same person you went to school with. It's not a must. You have to connect to a bond that is suitable to you. Just like marriage. You don't marry because you went to school together. Sometimes you have to travel. When God is bringing to the bones together, hey, proximity is never a factor. But I remembered when I posted to message me on Facebook. That was before we get married. I know you people are ready to hear gist. Hallelujah. Then I can't even like it, it doesn't connect. It's not connecting. Like where I am and where he is is not connecting, but he has to travel. And that's what I'm talking about. Sometimes you are limited. Sometimes you think your boyfriend is around where you are. Sometimes you think you are getting married to, hey, maybe you are going to THN Church. Definitely you are getting married to Mr. Gbola or Mr. Faith. Like, you are not seen beyond your environment. Strategic connection is the essential factor. Our meeting was just super strategic. Even me, I cannot explain. And that's, that's, that's how you know when a journey is Christ ordained. Because even you will not be able to explain it. I want a yellow man, a yellow papa. But God gave you a dark papa. He gave you for a reason. Hallelujah. I never imagined my husband would be as tall as that. <laughs> Hallelujah. But he came so tall. Sometimes what you want is not what you need. This is one of the strategies for the restoration of the cadence. The power of your words. The power of information. Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 4 to 5. The Bible says again. Wow. <laughs> he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say to them, all ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. See, there is no need to lie in the praise of the Lord. Admit that you are dry home. Some people are so touch that I don't know. I don't know where you brought the. Uh, I, I, is it because we're in a Gen Z generation? Some people are too, too so touch in the praise of God that you forget you have a destiny. That you forget there is a woman in one village that wants to what? That wants to destroy that destiny. The church is not ordained for tushness. It's for deliverance. It's for liberty. It's for connectivity. That's why when I hear some people, I'm not going to church because I don't have the dress to wear. Hey! You know, you know, that's an excuse to them. And I'm like, what kind of excuse is this? I remember when I was still in my former church before I got married. I joined the worship team. I remember there was a blazer I used to wear 247. It's black. And trouser. 
Nobody will know. Somebody tell somebody, nobody will know. Tell somebody, say, nobody will know. As long as nobody in your ghetto, nobody will know. As long as you are washing it, nobody will know. See, you don't need to hide anything when it comes to serving God. What are, what are you hiding in the presence of God? You that God has seen you finish. I mean, you are forming, you are, you are forming to God that has seen your destiny. And you're now you're now teaching yourself to the ones that I don't know. The, the ones that don't even have the capacity to give you life. Ma, I don't have the capacity to give you life. Only God has. So why will you, you, you are you forming in presence of God? Ah, God oh. If I need to off my shoe when I want to dance, I will off it. If I need to prostrate when I need to praise God, I will prostrate. I am not here for anyone. I am not here for anyone. Say to your neighbor, I am not here for anyone. Even my husband will not stop me from worshiping God. And you will not stop me from being emotional when I'm praising God. Because I'm the one that knows what he did for me. It's, it, 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 in the presence of God, you are, you are, you are looking this way. Just two hours of in the prayer. Two hours. Two hours. How many hours do we have in a week? Just two hours in the praise of God. And you destabilize yourself. You, you, you let the enemy manipulate you. You let the devil manipulate you. And you are checking the time. Pastor is pastor is too, his preaching is too long. I'm here to tell you that we are not closing until. Because they already told me that I used to. Pastor Mrs. is always is faster than an apostle. I'm, I'm no, I'm changing it this time. Around. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are the children of the most high God. And we have come with a sword. There is always a noise by your speaking. Please speak. Physically is not making sense, but spiritually something is happening. Things are changing. The clouds are gathering. You don't have to see what is happening because if you see, you'll be distracted. Hey, did I say something? You don't have to see it because if you see it, there's a probability that you are, you will even be proud. Never stop prophesying. Be determined. Great works are performed by determination. These bones must become an army. What was scattered is coming together for me and my household and the church of God. We are the children of God and we've come with a sword. And that sword, no devil, even the devil's mother, great grandfather can, no devil can collect it. Because the sword of God is the spirit of God. Second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. The Bible says, And we all with unveiled fears, behold in the glory of the Lord. Hey, I've been transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. Beholding the glory of the Lord. What you behold, you are changed into. Hey, hey. What you behold, you become. Your picture is your future. What you picture is what you capture. Even if your situations does not warrant you to be seeing the right thing, please stay focused and keep seeing the right things. Keep saying the right things. Even if no man is coming, my man is coming. My husband is coming. There was a time I told God, 
<laughs> you know, my, my father started asking me, she would hear the mokawale. And I'm like, you see, I have men around me, but I can't pick. I am surrounded with a lot. In fact, I have many toasters. But I can't just say, you are my husband. That was what was happening to me before I got married. And now I understood better. Now I understand better. Somebody say it's worth the wait. Somebody say it's worth the wait. Now it might not be husband or wife. It might be children. It might be blessings. That the firstborn is doing so well. Please don't be laid back. That you are the last one does not mean you will receive it last. Your turn is coming. And as a child of God, we rejoice with those that rejoice. No, we don't mourn because they are rejoicing. Hey, do you hear that? We don't mourn because they are rejoicing. We rejoice with those that rejoice. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. And the Bible says, Be all the glory. The same energy it takes you to cry should be what it takes you to fight. If the way you cry is the way you put that energy to fight the devil, you will have overcome. You will have won. Hey, God, oh, what have I done to deserve this? That man just broke my heart. He just did a lot of things to me. I lost everything. I lost children. I lost this. I lost that energy. Pour that energy into fighting. Into fighting in the war room. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your glory is your spiritual relocation to get your spiritual allocation. So position yourself rightly. Somebody say, I am positioned rightly. Somebody say, I am positioned rightly. Can you stand up with me this morning and let's decree together this morning. We believe you have been blessed by this audio podcast and we never like to close without giving you an opportunity to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Would you say this prayer with me? Dear Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart today and I am making you the Lord of my life. Amen. Congrats. You are now a child of God. Thank you for listening and downloading Tamiwa Oluwen podcast. We want to take over nations for Christ. Partner with us today by visiting www.heavennation.org forward slash donate. Kindly subscribe to get update of new messages and share with your friends and families. We love you and we celebrate you.